Welcome to another Sigma Live Hangout. Today, we're honored to have the renowned Australian Cypriot poet Gorali Dimitriades, author of Love and Fuck Poems. Gorali is in Cyprus promoting her book and set to do some readings for her European tour. She's going to be performing in Nicosia on October 4th and Limassol on October 6th. Welcome, Gorali. I know you wanted to start with a reading, so let's have one. Oh, okay. Thanks for having me. And um, I'm going to do a poem called Define Me, Prosti Seme. Define me, prosti seme. Define me, square me, stake the fence, high, bless me with golden chimes, pray for my soul, pray. Bake me, Greek pastries, smash them with my fist, splat. Keep me, a show prize, hook, catch on that barbed wire. Quita me, quita me buona flego me, geo, sbroxe me, stoero, rixe confetti, quita dona pefti. Lock me, go ahead, lock me in a box. Smell me, is that sex you smell? Don't confuse yourself, define me, go ahead, define me. That was lovely and it's mm. raw and full of emotion. So you speak about repression a lot in your poems. So where does this stem from? Um, I think it stems from um, uh, being like Greek Cypriot and um, coming from a migrant background. Um, you know, I, I did experience um, quite a strict upbringing. And so um, a lot of what I write is from that perspective, the daughter of um, Greek Cypriot immigrants. And um, a lot of what I write is um, to do with that experience, but I also write about so many things, not just sex <laughs> mm. and repression. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what I write about. And so what makes a poet? Oh, what makes a poet? That's interesting. Um, I think a poet is writing poetry is a natural ability. It's something that um, I felt I always had in me. And um, there's a voice inside there that wants to express something in a, in a lyrical way, in a poetic way. So yeah, I think that's what. And so where did you think your style gets influenced from when you write your poetry? Like, where, you know, it's not exactly like traditional poetry. Do you have some sort of rhythm that you follow? Is there something that speaks to you that makes you, you know, write the way you write? Um, yeah, I've thought about this and I think I don't, because I never, um, the teacher that I had for poetry when I studied my diploma in writing um, said to me, there are no rules to poetry. And that really liberated me and made me um, like listen to the natural voice that I have inside me. And so what makes me write a poem is if I feel an emotion in, in a moment and I feel like I need to write something to feel better. So I have a moment um, where I might write a, a poem in two minutes and it's a really intense feeling and then the intensity passes if I write the poem. But then the poem exists and I can share it and I can perform it. I can perform a poem that I wrote five years ago and the way that I perform it, it's like I lived it yesterday, even though I've moved beyond it and I don't feel that way anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you talked about growing up as a Greek Cypriot in, in Australia and how it sort of, you know, it influences not only your poetry and your writing. Is that something that you sort of carry with you? Do you carry cult the Greek culture with you or the Greek Cypriot culture with you? And, you know, is it, was the repression, so to speak, you know, something that made, you know, life growing up difficult? Um, I mean, Cyprus was always something that my parents would talk about as home. Mm -hmm. So that became home for me. And so when I come to Cyprus, I always feel at home, like it's my home, like almost like where I belong. Um, and it definitely influenced my writing and wanting to communicate not only to the culture in Australia, the migrant culture, but also the culture here and the culture in Greece. Because I feel like even though some people in in Greece and Cyprus can dismiss my work as, oh, well, it's not relevant here, you know, because she's talking about the, the migrant experience and it's not relevant here. But I think it is relevant because we are the migrants, we are the children of those migrants and we have stories to tell. 
and we want to share those stories with where we came from because I do feel like, you know, I came from Cyprus and I want to communicate with that, that audience. And so what did it mean to you to have your poems translated into Greek, you know, after having them written in English, you know, having written them in English, what did it mean to you to have them translated into Greek and go on this European tour? And um, It meant a lot and it wasn't something that I had planned. Uh, you know, Love and Fuck poems went... Um, you, the success of Love and Fuck Poems was unexpected for me because I write about lots of different things um, and this book in particular has had success. Uh, and when the Australian government gave me some funding to travel to Cyprus and work with the translator, I, I couldn't believe they would do that. And so I was really happy about that. And working um, with my translator, Costantina Ioannidou, um, was a beautiful experience because I hated going to Greek school as a child. My parents made me go. Um, and I fell in love with the Greek language again and just choosing the words and working with her and seeing it as a book. And the poems just sounded so much more powerful in Greek. It made me think, because Greek was my first language, that's what my parents spoke to me at home, I started thinking, oh, maybe they're meant to be in Greek. Like, you know, because that is my first language. And they took on a life of their own in Greek and I'm so happy to read them in Greek and to perform them in Greek. Wow. So who do you hope your poetry will reach? Like what are, what's the people that you hope to reach and what's the feeling that you hope to, you know, bring to your readers? Um, that's an interesting question because I get a lot of Greek men and Cypriot men contacting me on Facebook wanting to take me out <laughs> after they read my poems. But while I'm flattered by that, uh, my, uh, who I'm trying to connect with is women. And the reason for that is because I feel like uh, I, for a lot of time in my life, I felt like I wasn't normal for how I felt and um, I didn't feel like I could make my own choices and that I had to do what was expected of me. And I felt very sad and very alone and isolated, like nobody understood what I was going through. And so, and this happens a, a lot, I think, in um, the culture in Australia, in migrant culture, but also here and in Greece. And, um, and I feel like I wanna communicate with those silenced women and make them feel like they're not alone and, and it's okay to express whatever you want to express and be who you want to be and to not be afraid because I think people connect with my honesty in my work, in all of my work. It's not just a bunch of sex poems, it's honesty. Whatever I feel, I, I want to express it and people connect with that honesty and I want to give people bravery to be honest. So you talk about, you know, migrant culture in, in Australia. Is it something that you've seen differs from community to community? And, uh, or are the stories sort of become similar eventually from your own readers and reading your poetry out there? Do you get, you know, re do you get reach in other communities as well? Definitely, definitely. I think a lot of... Um immigrants from many, because Australia is a very multicultural society. So uh, usually um, migrants come with their culture and they stay stuck in their, in their ways. And it's very hard for them to move on. Uh, it, it, it happens at a much slower pace. Like what I experienced 20 years ago, you know, things have sort of softened since then. Uh, but, you know, Indian women will connect with my work. You know, Lebanese women will connect with my work. So, you know, women from all sorts of different backgrounds who have experienced that, you know, very strict upbringing that, you know, women should be like this and do this. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you, tuck on, you touch on the sexuality of women in your works. Is that something, you know, that you hope, you know, women will take and liberate themselves and sort of become freer with themselves and their sexuality? Um, this is a really interesting question because I think a lot of people read my work and they think I'm just a sex poet. And it really frustrates me because I'm not encouraging women to go around and, you know, have sex with 50 different men or anything like that. 
What I'm trying to say is just be honest with whatever you're feeling. If, if you feel like you want to do something, do it and don't feel ashamed. If, if you want to say something, say it. That is the message of all of my work. And um, it just so happens that this book is, is successful, which has sex poems in them. But I have lots of other poems which have nothing to do with sex. And the same message applies. Great. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you so much for coming and seeing us and talking to us about such an interesting subject. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me.